Fake information are two prong. <coughs> Ensure the public's health and safety by facilitating contact tracing and ensure that the individual's right to privacy is not impeached. Hence, we appeal to all to coordinate closely with the Department of Health when disseminating information to the public and within their respective institutions. Let us make sure the information sharing process will yield the utmost benefit and avoid unnecessary stress and stigma to individuals. The DOH commits to be more circumspect in reporting confirmed cases, to balance interests of public health and privacy. To this end, only pertinent information necessary to facilitate contact tracing will be provided to the public, such as activity, location, and time if available. For improving diagnostic capacity, the current gold standard for diagnosing COVID-19 is through laboratory-based polymerase chain reaction, or PCR testing. RITM, with the assistance of the WHO, is currently capacitating five sub-national laboratories for PCR testing. San Lazaro Hospital and Lung Center of the Philippines in Manila. Baguio General Hospital and Medical Center in Northern Luzon. Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center in the Visayas region. And Southern Philippines Medical Center in Mindanao. In addition, efforts are underway for the University of the Philippines National Institutes of Health to be similarly capacitated. DOH has received several proposals of rapid testing kits including one that has been developed locally. To date, these kits have yet to be listed or validated under the WHO emergency use list. Such validation is indeed necessary to ensure accuracy of test results. We don't like false negative results, okay? You say a patient is negative and in fact it's positive, you let them go, that's really scary, okay? DOH is determined to expand our testing capacity for COVID-19 to immediately ascertain that cases are identified and dealt with. We are studying these proposals to ensure that they are accurate and safe for public's use. Enhanced testing capacity is a prerequisite to prevention and containment. Hence, the DOH is placing expansion of testing centers as one of its topmost priorities. Lastly, updates on contact tracing. On the new three confirmed cases, the Epidemiology Bureau, or EB, in coordination with Centers for Health Development and City Health Offices, is currently establishing travel history and identification of individuals who might have had contact with the positive cases. Identified contacts are being interviewed and assessed for signs of respiratory illness. We will be prioritizing testing of these symptomatic individuals found to have had close contact with the confirmed cases. We urge those who may have interacted with the confirmed cases within the past 14 days to immediately call the DOH hotline at 2 local 1149 and 1150 for appropriate referral to a health facility. DOH reiterates that based on current data, this is very important. I have said this before, I'll say it over and over again. 81% of cases have mild are or mild disease. About 14% appear to progress to severe disease and 5% are critical. For persons with known history of exposure or travel and with mild symptoms including cough, fever, cold, and sore throat, DOH is advising you to undergo home quarantine and contact your respective city 
municipal health office for proper assessment, monitoring, and management. Let me reiterate, we have recommended the declaration of a state of public health emergency despite the fact that we only have two cases constituting localized transmission. Trust that the Department of Health is proceeding with utmost vigilance and is working vigorously to protect Filipinos against COVID-19. End of my press statement. Thank you so much, Secretary Lupe. We are now opening the floor for questions. Just a gentle reminder to please raise your hand and make to be recognized before proceeding to ask your question and to also try to limit your question to one at a time. Um, the lady in red first and then the lady. Hi, Secretary. Max Paul from Metal Sir, may we know po, kamusta na yung other member po ng family no mag-asawa na nag-positive sa COVID-19? I am uh, informed that they are asymptomatic. Wala po silang symptomas. Okay, yun lang. Sec, good afternoon. Bernadette Reyes po from GMA7. Sir, pardon po, no? pero meron po kasi mga dumalabas sa social media. There's someone saying from Kainta and then there's one po yung isa raw na uh, opisina sa May Tagig. Are this also part of those na nag-positive or uh, what's your message? You're talking to about the Deloitte. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, That's the one. That's the first uh, local case. Uh, not really a local case, but one of uh, the cases we reported uh, yesterday. <laughs> Okay, so kasama na po siya doon sa 6. Kasama Yun naman daw po doon sa... Kasi lang, no? gusto ko lang din ipaalam sa inyo. Uh, alimbawa ang Cardinal Santos. Tumawag yan sa kay Dr. Uh, Mapue ng Center for Health Development. They made a request na kung pwede mo tamanggitin yung Cardinal Santos na ito sa Only to find out later, sila pala mismo ang nagbanggit ng sarili niya. So you know, this is not fair. They're going to ask, request that their institutional names not be mentioned only to find out that they are that on their own mentioning. So, kung ano pala, let's just say, you know, on these institutions, because it's, it's not fair, di ba? Mahigig-usap kayo, tapos sabihin namin, okay, we respect, okay, tapos maglalabas kayo, hindi naman tama yun. So, I tell you, this is really, you know, very unprofessional on the part of uh, some of these institutions. Sir, yung sa Deloitte po, dapat po nag-inform muna sila sa DOH. Is that the proper way to go about it? Uh, ang sinasabi nga namin, ma'am, uh, meron namang karapatan ang mga private institutions para magkaroon sila ng uh, pag-i-inform uh, sa mga tao na meron silang gano'n. But ang sinasabi lang muna, namin, sana po, nagkakaroon tayo ng ugnayan kapag dating dito sa pag-share ng information. Dahil alam po namin ang intensyon ay maayos dahil gusto lang nilang pangalagaan ng kanilang mga empleyado. Ngunit pag tinignan mo natin sa isang banda, yung implikasyon naman mo sa buong populasyon na nagkakaroon ng takot, nagkakaroon po ng stigma yung mga tao na nagtatrabaho doon. So ito sana ay may iwasan natin kung merong direct na pakikipag-ugnayan. Um, Sek, yung last na lang po, yung tungkol po doon sa lumalabas sa social media, tungkol po doon sa homeowners ng Kainta, is that related to the one of the six cases na po ba? Oh, yes, uh, they are residents of the fifth case. So, uh, Thank you po. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, before this press call, marami kami nakita ng police sa labas. Kasi, uh, ang mga balita, sir, ay eh, nakuha namin. Andi dito na NCR PO Chief. May panic na ba talaga sa Metro Manila? Nagsiti lang sila, nagpa-orient on uh, the guidelines as to what to do. Uh, the PNP, how they can help, uh, ano yung preparation, so yun lang. Wala naman kasi ano naman ka guard dyan dito? Baka ikaw. Ano naman yan? Napaisin lang siya. Juve, and then sir. Yeah. Sir, in, in terms of the testing kits lang na meron tayo ngayon, is it adequate? And how many more testing kits are we expecting from WHO to come habang wala pang uh, uh, verification for the testing kits that are being developed here locally? Uh, can I just ask uh, WHO country to answer that? Uh, 
So uh, WHO is responding to requests from the Department of Health and particularly from the RITM. Uh, we need to recognize that there is a huge global demand for these reagents, chemicals, and testing materials. So we are also having challenges of rapidly procuring the numbers. But so far, we are delivering. Just last week, we delivered, uh, earlier this week, we delivered 5,000 test kits. Uh, we have in the pipeline other test kits arriving middle of next week. We are processing fresh requests for increased quantities based on what the evolving situation on the ground now. And we will do our best to ensure that the DOH and RITM don't run short of their requirements. Yes, uh, Sadia, uh, RITM Director Carlos. Uh, may I add that parallel with the um, kits being provided by WHO, we have um, several weeks ago initiated local procurement of the same kits from foreign suppliers. But the limiting step, uh, as was mentioned, is the availability of such uh, reagents and kits internationally because of the huge demand. So we have worked in multiple ways so that we will get the necessary reagents and kits to be able to do the laboratory testing. And if I may add, I would take this opportunity also to acknowledge that uh, WHO is being supported by USAID, who has provided additional funding so that we can expand and procure larger quantities of testing materials. So I take this opportunity to thank USAID also on that. Well, the same uh, is true for the DOH. We thank all the uh, development partners for uh, their staunch uh, and material support uh, to the cause of uh, effectively responding to the uh, manifold uh, challenge uh, of uh, COVID-19. So by, by raising the alert level to a COVID, so if a patient um, suffers from fever, sore throat, coughing, the usual symptoms that we have for COVID-19, will they immediately be tested for COVID-19? Or what, what's, what's going to be the process? Uh, una una po, uh, meron po tayong pinapalo na decision tool no, kapag tayo ay nakaklassify ng isang pasyente. Ang decision po para mag-shift tayo to this code another level of uh, alert level is for us to uh, preempt no the possibility at maghanda po tayo no mafacilitate natin ang mobilization ng ating mga resources makapag-preposition po tayo ng critical logistics as to uh, kung paano natin masasabi hindi ho natin sinasabi na porke nag-raise tayo ng alert level lahat na lang na makakaramdam ng may sipon may ubo maglagnat ay kailangan pumunta sa ospital Ang sinasabi mo natin dito, yun pa rin mong ating decision tool, yun mong ating criteria kung kailan po kayo pupunta sa ating mga facilities ay masusunod pa rin. So kung kayo ay may history of travel, kung kayo po ay may mga simptomas, at uh, kayo po sakali no, ay kasama dun sa may exposure at you had direct contact with these people who are positive right now and then you go to the facility. But for all those persons na nakakaramdam mo ngayon ng mga sintomas, na nakakaramdam ng lagnat, ubo, sipon, wala naman mong history of travel, alam naman po nila na hindi po sila nagkaroon ng kahit na anong way na makasalamuha yung positibo nating kaso sa ngayon, hindi po kailangan pumunta sa facility. So let me just take this opportunity to just uh, uh, masabi lang, may kumakalat po ngayon sa ating social media na nakalagay uh, ina-advertise po yung ating uh, servisyo sa RITM. Sinasabi po doon, ang RITM 24-7 na bukas, free ang testing at kahit sinong makakaranas ng ubo at sipon o lagnat ay pumunta doon para matest. Hindi po ito totoo. Kailangan pa rin po tayong magkaroon ng mga protocols kung paano natin ito gagawin. Katulad ng sabi ko, yun lang kung may history of travel or exposure. Doon po sa ating sinasabing mga positibong kaso ngayon or na-interact kayo with them, nakasalamuha, yun lang po with symptoms ang pwedeng may test ngayon sa ating mga facilities. Uh, alam niyo, kanina sinabi natin binigyan din yung global supply is not 
adequate. So it doesn't make sense for this social media to allege that RITM is open to receive uh, anyone for testing. So it doesn't make sense. So we just want to Next question. Uh, sir, if I may, uh, please, um, we, what we have now is localized transmission. And what the DOH is trying to do is to define the parameters by case, by contacting the, the close contacts, testing them, doing the case investigations to define how, what, is, what are the parameters of this cluster. So we need to be conscious that anybody in Manila or in the Philippines who has a respiratory tract infection is not having COVID-19, right? WHO has, right from the beginning of this outbreak, saying we are, we are in that season where you see a lot of flus, and we need to practice social distancing, frequent hand hygiene, and cough etiquette, so that we minimize the spread of flus. And that situation still applies to the Philippines. We, we want to clearly define who is affected. Is there transmission beyond these two cases that we have confirmed, right? Um, and we need to identify who could be at risk. So the mere fact that you have a respiratory tract infection doesn't mean that you need to be tested for COVID, right? Unless you have been a close contact with these cases. As we investigate these cases, we'll have a clearer understanding of the local spread of this disease. And that information, when available, will be shared by the OH and, and the public. So we urge you to still be rational and not demand that every single respiratory tract infection that anybody contracts needs to be checked for COVID-19. That is not a possibility for any country. Right? We, every country practices contact tracing, and if you have suspected exposure or travel history, only those people are tested. You cannot test everybody. So we have to be realistic about capacity. That's not what I mean. case number five, sir, we have initial information kung sino or saan niya likely nakuha yung infection. And Kapag na declare na po yung uh, public health emergency, what would happen sa mga schools, sa offices natin? Ano yung mga actions na nakita natin? Kasi right now, Nagwatas has already uh, suspended classes on Monday in light of the uh, COVID cases. Uh, hindi siguro dapat <coughs> pinawa mo na yun. <coughs> But that's their decision, you know, being independent uh, or being uh, uh, covered uh, under the local uh, government code. So that's their own uh, decision, but uh, as of today, we are uh, on sub-level one of code red, and that is not being uh, recommended. So hindi po tama na yun ay uh, gagawin sa mayon. There will be triggers that will uh, <clears throat> make the DOH recommend uh, part of the sub-level two uh, under code red. So, meron na po tayong uh, protocol na uh, patungkol dyan. So, ito naman na uh, patungkol dun sa ikalimang pasyente, there has been no uh, report from our contact tracing teams or the team that's assigned to this case number 5 uh, as to the possible source of their infection. That hasn't been established. Secretary. Um, when do we expect the Malacanang to give the recommendation to the DOH? Is this immediately? Uh, I think that is, uh, uh, we're, we're looking at Monday for the uh, for the declaration, for the release or issuance of uh, a document that uh, will uh, uh, say that uh, the President has uh, approved our recommendation. Okay. So, just to be clear, uh, contact tracing is still ongoing, but uh, as as Premier said, we will shift starting on Monday. Oh, magpapatuloy pa rin ba yung contact tracing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tuloy-tuloy. Uh, pa, patuloy yung ating uh, contact tracing. Ito naman na uh, shift to 
sub level 2 of code red kapag ka may established na tayo mga uh, community transmissions or several uh, unlinked, hindi linked na mga uh, clusters of cases. So, wala pa tayo sa ganun state. So, it is uh, uh, premature to even consider that at this point. Secretary, let's now go to I just have to ask the Secretary, um, there are some groups who are questioning the transparency of the DOH in terms of giving information to the public. There was also a senator who says that uh, the DOH should not be giving the public a false sense of security. Can we just get your reaction on this? You see, uh, from uh, as early as about three weeks ago, I kept saying that it is not a question of if, but a question of when. Hindi ko po sinabi na hindi tayo magkakaroon ng COVID-19 sa Pilipinas. You can look at all your uh, documents, <coughs> your tapes, uh, capturing my PRs, uh, and you will see very clearly. In my interviews with uh, the radio and television, I always said, hindi kung ito ba e darating. Malamang darating. Yun lamang kailang. So nakita na natin dumating na. No March 5. That was yesterday. Friday, right? Yes, 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 Friday. Okay. So I never I never uh, said that oh we're okay. Nothing to worry about. So I never said that, so I'm sorry, I totally uh, disagree uh, with that statement because it has no basis whatsoever. Okay? Yeah. Yung mga iba naman na mga nagkakalat ng kung ano-ano, yung transparency, gaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo, we were requested by a certain institution, by the hospital, okay, not to disclose. So we, we saw the reason. Why not? Kasi baka yung mga empleyado nila, mas stigmatized, etc. But hindi naman tama yun. Sasabihan mo kami, tapos pala mamaya-maya, ito mismo ang magbubulat-lat na Eh, sa inyo pala galing yung uh, pasyente. O, di ba ba? So, yung naging yun naman dyan. Dahil eh, hindi naman tama ito. Uh, GMA 7, then, uh, ang function. Sir, Dixito Santos from DCWP. Kung pinay ko lang po yung sa court case, ito po ba yung sa device? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Abina Towers and St. Luke's issued a uh, statement so can you confirm, sir, kung involved dito yung, yung case number 5 that they handled uh, case of COVID? Uh, for, for this one. Uh, yes, uh, for this, because they have already issued the statement, it came from them, yes, uh, one of the patients uh, were involved and uh, was part no, of uh, this uh, building and also uh, coming from that hospital. Case number 4. Case number four. Sir, update po sa contact tracing for the people the nationals. Ilan na po ang nakontak? Ongoing pa po yung ating efforts doon. Though uh, kahapon po nasabi natin na nakapagbuo na tayo ng mga teams para mag-head at uh, mapuntahan po yung mga naitala natin ng mga informasyon base doon sa tatlong napuntahan ng ating tatlong corridors. So in the coming days, we will be providing you with uh, updated information. Sa ngayon po, ongoing, lumabas pa lang po yung mga tao natin para puntaan ito mga lugar na ito. Sir, update sa landing sense. May information na kayo kung ilan yung Pilipino, kung may positive ng Pilipino? Doon sa mga online. What we know as of this morning is that 46 people on Grand Prix has protested. 21 of them were positive. Uh, among the 21 were 19 crew members and two passengers. Among the 19 crew members, I understand there are six Filipinos. This is unconfirmed reports. This is what we've just heard. Uh, so we understand that among the positives, six of them are six of them are Filipino crew members. Sir, sorry po. Um, is there any specific orders from the president on the recent cases? None as of the moment. Sir, indeed. Uh, Secretary, mamaya uwi na yung uh, 
137 na Pilipino. Kung quarantine pa rin po kasi ng Macau, Macau. Ay sa mga Macau. Uwi na po uh, yung ating mga repatriates ng mga kababayan galing sa Macau at ang kanilang classification po ay magiging persons under monitor. So mag-home quarantine pa rin po sila, bibigyan ng advice. Kung meron po tayo makitang symptomatic sa pagdating nila sa pag-assess natin, yun po ay magiging patient under investigation. Dali niya tayo Ano po yung condition po ng patients na nasa RIDM? Yung 62-year-old, what kind of court is there? Uh, I would like to request uh, Director Sanya of RITM to respond to the court. The 48-year-old and the uh, newest case, our six case, are uh, having just mild respiratory symptoms. Whereas the 62-year-old is uh, in a guarded condition because he still has severe pneumonia plus other medical problems like diabetes, hypertension. And we recently uh, identified another medical problem which is uh, acute kidney injury. Uh, which may be due to multiple factors present in the patient. So, uh, on the other hand, his oxygen requirement is less and his uh, need for uh, drugs to elevate his blood pressure is also less. So there are good developments, there are also uh, bad developments. So, uh, in general, I would say he is in a guarded condition. So, clarify ko lang po critical condition, guarded. No, no, that's critical condition, yeah. Now, uh, let's be reminded that based on the experience, uh, the clinical conditions of uh, severe cases as reported in China, it takes very long time for them to recover, from three to six weeks, when critical. However, if mild, it's anywhere from two, two weeks to about uh, three weeks. Uh, sex. Regarding po din sa testing capacity po natin, kamusta po yung accreditation ng for subnationals po na laboratories? Well, they're undergoing assessment. Uh, there are, I believe, uh, different stages of uh, compliance with the standards. And perhaps, again, the Director Sadia might be uh, able to answer that more authoritatively. The, the five uh, subnational labs who are being uh, provided capacity to test have completed their training on COVID uh, identification yesterday. And in the proficiency test, all of them passed. I'm happy to report that all of them passed the proficiency test. In addition, there is another laboratory, the UPNIH, uh, whom we are providing uh, technical assistance as well and we will be evaluating their facilities uh, next week. Um, I'm Sheila Dejay Mason. Pwede po mag-follow up. Mga ilang days pa po kaya bago masabi na pwede na po silang mag-test mo for COVID? Actually, if, since they already showed capacity, in um, if we only had the reagents, they complete readings, they could start any moment from now. But uh, since we're still awaiting um, availability of agents, it may take some time more for them to be able to test on their own. But we will look into our resources in RITM if we can you know, distribute the limited resources that we have to them. But considering that most of the testing needs are in NCR, we think that priority should be given to laboratories within NCR for now. So for now, we are a, there are actually different testing kits to do a complete test. Just to clarify that, marami pong iba klase to complete the whole testing procedure. Uh, but to do, but, but we have kits enough to complete about 2,500 tests at the moment. GMA7, Sir Jovi. Sir, nabanggit niyo po yung social distancing and uh, iwasan muna yung mass gatherings. Paano po sa Holy Week, uh, Sir? Would you discourage yung mga visita iglesia or mga activities to be set aside po muna? Yeah, hindi naman. Basta yung social distancing mo as much as you can, one meter away from each other, 
uh, that's one. Then number two, uh, just don't, as the church hierarchy has repeatedly reminded us, wag nga halik dun sa mga uh, uh, imahe, okay? So, meron ng mga precautionary measures ang uh, simbahan na uh, katolika. So, sundin natin. Apo. Sek, isa na lang po. Uh, yung pong pinuntahan ng Japanese National, yung mga hotels, ano pong ginaga- ginawa doon sa mga pinuntahan ng hotels? Uh, kasama yan doon sa contact tracing na sinasagawa okay. since yesterday. Apo. So, we'll just give you regular updates on the uh, coverage, uh, the performance of uh, the teams responsible for contact tracing. Hmm. Disinfection po ng mga hotels, may ganun po ba? Oh, that's a given. Thank you. Okay. Sir, yung sa case number four lang natin, can we identify the flight number ng uh, patient? And given na uh, uh, dumating siya ng uh, February 25 and manifesting symptoms niya ng March 3, pumasok pa mo ba siya sa BGC during that one week period? Uh, can I request uh, the uh, asset uh, regime? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Doon po sa tinatanong nyo no, na history niya, yung chronology, kung pumasok pa siya. Uh, apparently, dun sa kanyang binigay na na informasyon sa amin ay nakapasok siya no, ng isang araw uh, kung saan uh, siya ay nagkaroon ng meeting no, kasama yung mga kaupisina niya. So, yun sa kanyang... Uh, Uh, doon sa kanyang binigay ng history sa amin. At kung ano yung kanyang flight number, uh, okay, it's uh, PR421 coming from Japan. Haned- Haneda Airport. Sa class na po, to clarify lang, kaya po tayo nag-code red because of the local transmission. Ay, yung, yung po ba yon Yung nag-trigger? for the code red sub level 1 it's uh, one of the triggers okay mm-hmm. so because we have uh, uh, two uh, localized uh, mm-hmm. uh, transmission mm-hmm. or cases mm-hmm. so that is why we did not need to go to uh, sub level 2 sub level 1 so it's calibrated okay. Okay. so to confirm ko um yung three new cases po lahat po yung Filipinos ko yes And ilan po yung dapat na local uh, transmissions para ma-declare na sub-level 2 po yung code? There, there has to be uh, unrelated or unlinkable uh, cluster of cases in different places. Uh, simultaneous, uh, there are uh, uh, transmissions going on. Last few questions, Sir Yaki. Secretary, can we get an update on the repatriation of the Filipinos stranded in Macau? We understand that they are arriving today. Uh, what will happen to them? What are the procedures? Yes, sir. Uh, sa ngayon po, no, ang ating mga repatriates or mga kababayan galing Macau, total of 162 of them ay uuwi dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. Uh, nagkaroon lang po tayo ng usapan no, with other member agencies of the interagency task force kung saan nakapagbuo tayo ng protocol o procedures po uh, mula po sa paglapag ng kanilang aeroplano hanggang sa makababa sila hanggang sa sila po ay magkaroon ng uh, staging where we can do assessment sa kanilang lahat. So silang lahat po ay mag undergo ng assessment itignan kung sino sa kanila ang may mga simptomas. Kung sino po sa kanila may mga simptomas, may nakahanda po tayo mga ambulansya uh, na mga uh, doon po sa ating area at dadali na sila doon sa ating referral facilities. Ayun uh, naman pong walang simptomas ay i-advise po sila for home quarantine. Meron pa rin yung mga ibang proseso no, na uh, ibibigay at gagawin kasama ang ating OWA at saka Department of Foreign Affairs and of course the Bureau of Immigration kasama sila. Pagkatapos po nun ay sila na po ay uuwi. Now when they get home, there is this monitoring scheme kung saan katulong naman po natin ang ating local government units and of course OWA para maipatupad natin at masiguro natin na talagang magka-quarantine po itong ating mga kababayan. Last two questions. Sir, um, yung dinesinfect kasi kahapon yung um, Muslim prayer hall sa San Juan. May minok kung paano ginagawa itong disinfect? 
disinfection process in uh, regular disinfection system ba to and ga- kailan pwede gamitin ulit yung facility uh, i am told this one is to uh, one is to 100 uh, the hydrochloride uh, solution which is uh, used to spray the areas for disinfection and it's very effective it's the most effective in fact. Uh, uh, 24 hours. Yeah. So after that, that can already be reopened by 4 o'clock. From UNTV, what scenarios are we expecting for if public health emergencies? Well, I have uh, told you that uh, once the state of public health emergency is declared, this will facilitate mobilization of resources, ease the processes, uh, including procurement of uh, logistics and uh, of critical logistics and supplies, uh, mandatory reporting has to be done, mandatory quarantine. So, yun lang naman yun. There is a very clear uh, set of objectives why that is going to be declared. We're accepting one last question. Anyone? If none, okay. that ends Thanks our press much. briefing for today. Thank you so much to our panelists and yes. to everyone who came on a Saturday. And we'll see you again next week. Okay, thank you very much, Paolo. Thank you, Dr. Ravi, once again. No shaking of hands? Sanya, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.